Hi, this is Rebecca of Journal Tsunami, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to go over some of my most favorite tools that I use on a regular basis when I'm researching on Amazon. This question comes up all the time, so I thought I would make a quick series focusing on each tool singularly, one at a time. So the first tool that I'm going to talk about uh, the first group of tools are all free tools that you can get. They're all Chrome extensions. Um, as far as I know, there are no extensions for Firefox or Microsoft Edge. I don't use those browsers, so I'm not quite sure, but I don't think so. I think almost all of these are exclusively Chrome. Um, so if you're going to do your research, I would highly suggest that you use Chrome. So when you're using Chrome, all you have to do is go to Google and type in whichever tool it is that you want. In this case, it's the AMZ Suggestion Expander. And the very first thing on the top of your search will be that extension right here. It looks like this. It has these little arrows right here. And it will bring you to the page. Now, I obviously already have it on my toolbar. You just click, and then it asks for your permission to add it to Chrome, and then it will show up here on your toolbar. You can also read some of the information, because this is what it will look like when you have it open in, um, when you start using it on Amazon. Now, one of the things that's important to do with each one of these tools that are Chrome extensions is you'll need to go up to this three dots right here. You'll need to go down to more tools. It will say extensions and then it will take you to all the extensions that you have. Uh, here's the AMZ suggestion expander. I go to details. It will take me to the page for that particular extension. Then I scroll down the page and you can see it works on all the different marketplaces. So that's kind of cool. And you need to click on allow an incognito. And this will be toggled off. You need to toggle it on so that it's blue like this and not gray like this. So this is on and this is off. So you need to go allow an incognito. When you're in the incognito window, well, let me show you how to get there. Close that out. You go up to, if you're not familiar with Chrome, you'll go to these three dots again. You'll scroll down and go new incognito window. Once you click on that, it will open up your incognito window, which looks like this. The reason why you want to be in the incognito window is because it means that you are not logged into Amazon and so Amazon won't be influenced by prior research that you've done on their platform. Since I already have an incognito window open, let's just open that. So here I am on Amazon. You see I'm not signed in at all. Now granted Amazon and the incognito windows on your computer. So it has your ISP, it knows where you are, it knows your city. So it is going to have a certain amount of influence about those certain locations uh, that are there. And there's probably different ways to override it, but it's not really that important to some extent. We're not exactly doing search engine optimization where location is really very specific. So in this case, um, we are going to you go to this drop down menu here and you can actually start in all departments and I'm going to type in journal. You want to start off with just a seed keyword. So in our case for low content books, we would type in journal or notebook or planner or diary or workbook or something along those lines. And once you do the expander tool will show up like this and this is what is so valuable about this tool. Now I do wish that they did give you a way to download the uh, CSV or Excel spreadsheet with all these words but they don't so you do need to write down the information. 
Um, you'll see these search results here. Now that's from another tool that I have on my Chrome, which is called Keywords Everywhere. And we'll go into that tool in another video um, when I talk about Google research tools. Um, but it's really nice because now these know that these are not Amazon search results. These are Google search results, but they certainly do help me know that the word is searched for or not searched for. And so it's very helpful. Um, these in the white box here are the words that are searched for in general when people are typing words into the Google toolbar. These words in pink are showing words that come before, so our word was journal, so bullet journal, wreck this journal, which is a trademark term, it's a type of journal, leather journal, obviously if you're doing Amazon we don't make leather journals, gratitude journal, now that's a very helpful term, pregnancy journal, <clears throat> and then keywords after are journal notebook, journal bible, journal stencils, journal stickers, we obviously wouldn't be doing that, but if you have an Etsy store, that's worth taking notes on. And then some other words to think about, and so this gray box here is very, very helpful to give you more ideas so that you can drill down and not just be making generic journals. So we have journal four, and then if you want to use journal four, you can go journal four A and then see a whole bunch of stuff. And we'll do that in just a second. So there's journal for kids, journal for teenage girls, journal for teens, journal for men, lined pages. So that would be a notebook, journal for teen boys, pen set. I won't go through all of these, but these are worthwhile writing into a little notebook so that you can come back and take a look at them. So let's click on journal four and it will take you to this page. But what I wanna do is I want to do what is standard if you are just starting out in your low content research uh, you know, journey and you're just starting to get used to research, then it's always handy to use a seed keyword like I just showed you. So journal for Amazon is thinking. So once you get to this page, you'll have that keyword. We clicked on journal for, and then you can just cycle through the alphabet. Journal for A, for anxiety, depression, journals for adults, for alcoholics, a boy for anxiety for teens. So these, this is a treasure trove of seed ideas. Then we go for B and we just basically cycle through the alphabet. So for boys, uh, gratitude journal for boys, for baby girl, uh, prayer journal for boys, uh, for book lovers, book journal for book lovers, for breast cancer. And so each one of these is giving me a new idea Go for C, for couples, college visits, journal for Christian men, marriage journal for couples, relationship journal for couples, uh, and D, I'm not gonna go through all of these for you, uh, but as you can see for daughter and for moms, from moms, so that's a very popular topic. Uh, for depression, um, engraved journal, we couldn't do that one. For depression and anxiety, uh, for drawing, their journals uh, with coloring pages in them are very popular. Journal for a doctor. Now imagine going into that niche. There's all kinds of different doctors and many of those doctors, you know, they have anxiety and they have depression and they have, you know, stress. And so all of those types of journals niched into for doctors is great. Doctors, nurses, ER doctors, ER nurses, all kinds of different things can come to mind here. And then here's the words after journal food uh, exercise. I don't know why that came up for D since this is these are F words, uh, so that's kind of odd. Um, so then there's E, and again, you can just cycle through for an expectant mother. I think you can get the point here of all these amazing, amazing seed topics that we're getting and write these down into a book. So once I've gone down into this niche, I've touched upon a niche that has very few results. 
Holy moly, journal for an expectant mother has only 129 results, and I'm in the all category. So what we need to do is drill down into books just to see if this is really a nice niche to touch upon. Um, Amazon is thinking, there's probably a lot of people searching today, sitting at home. We want to go to books, and I'll click on search again when I'm down in books to make sure, because sometimes it will bring up more results when I'm in a very specific area of Amazon. See, now it's popped up to 259 results when I drill down into books. So that's important for me to know, but it's still actually a, almost a relatively untapped niche. Of course, once this video goes live, it will probably be tapped. <laughs> the next thing I want to do is click on Prime because I really want to research the books that I'm in competition with for the most part. So I first would sort of look at all of the books that are on these pages, but that means I'm looking at all kinds of vendors' books. I'm looking at books that are created by high-end publishing companies. And so those people have very large ad budgets, and so I would never be able to really compete with them. But it does give me an idea to take a look at the types of covers that are being done. So when I click on Prime, then I'm taken to books that are only being offered with Prime, meaning that they're either offered as CreateSpace books or the books are in an Amazon warehouse. Uh, then I'm going to go and I'm going to click on Include Out of Stock, so I get rid of those. And then I want to click on brand new because KDP books are always brand new. And then the final one that I'm going to click on, once this stops whirring, and sometimes you have the ability to click on it and sometimes you don't, this book format. So I'm going to click on paperback because it's the only kind of book I can compete against because I can't make a hardback book, I really only want to see all the different paperback books that are there. So I don't know why Prime wasn't kept on that. Click that back again. So up here, you'll see all the different things that I have clicked on, and they should all show up again. So in stock only, brand new, paperback, prime eligible, journal for expectant mother. Now this is amazing, this is great news. 29, 229 results. So I'm making this uh, in April of 2019. So next time you come to watch this video, if you do the same research, uh, if this has popped up to 2000, well, that means everybody on this video has gone and done books in this niche. So, but uh, right now, as of the making of this video, this is a niche that we just found. And what I would do next is start looking at the books that are here. And these are a couple of other tools that I have that we'll talk about. When I hover over it, this little box right here is from a tool called the DS Amazon Quick View. And I'll be talking about that in another video too. It gives me, I don't have to click and open a whole new page. I immediately get this little box and I also get this box down here as well. So I immediately get all kinds of great information right on my page without, and you don't have this, so you end up having to click and open all these pages to investigate these books. So this is telling me right here that this is uh, not a CreateSpace book, so that's interesting. So this is in the warehouse. It is created by somebody outside of KDP. This is a CreateSpace book. It was published in last year in 2018, so that's important to know when the book was published. This book is published on 2017 by Arlington. 
This book here is independently published, which means that it's published by KDP, and it was recently published here this year, March 9th of 2019. These are fairly, oh, this is three million, this is a million, this one here is really wonderful, this is only a thousand, but this is a done by a, a pediatrics organization, so that's a bestseller, so of course that's expected that that would have a lot of followers in it. So I'm looking at the numbers that are on this page, and they're okay. Um, this is a decent one. This is a Create Space book made in 2018, so I'd like to open that one. Um, this one here's a Create Space book made in 2018, so we're going to take a look at that one. Uh, that's not... Uh, Smith Family Resources, independently published, so I'll take a look at that one. Um, so you can see what I'm doing is I'm looking at the books that I'm going to be competing against that are in my genre, in my niche, that are create space, only because I know that I probably will have access to the look inside. And sometimes if you're looking at a book from another publisher, they may not have put the look inside, so sometimes I'm wasting my time by doing that. Now this is what's very important. I'm not stealing anybody's information. Their book is copyright protected. So that's important for you to understand. What I'm doing is I'm looking at their, their title. So I'm getting an idea of their keywords. I want to take a look inside at what the book looks like so that I know what I'm up against in terms of my competition. See, now this is just a plain lined notebook. It really isn't a journal of any kind um, for an expectant mother. It's just a lined notebook, and they do inform the people that it is a lined notebook to write in. So people are buying it more because it's a cute book to write in. And we also want to look at the prices. So this is $7.89, and so most of the books probably are in that particular category. We'll take a look at this one, Pray for Your Unborn Child. Again, I want to look at the title. It's nice and succinct and very clean. KDP does have some rules about not really wanting you to have your book size on anything. Looking at this cover, it's very nice. Uh, it's a, just a simple picture of a baby, and this, you know, you could easily make this in Canva or in you know, PowerPoint or Photoshop. It's very simple kind of cover with just a picture of a baby on it. And then we look inside and we'll see, okay, we have some Bible verses here, um, a little bit more prayer verses. So it's pray for your unborn child. So that makes sense. And so we can see that they have a table of contents here. And it looks like it is, I commit to praying for my unborn child. Here's the date, here's the sign and a dedicated prayer. So they found a little prayer and then they write down your thoughts about this prayer and the baby. And so we don't have any more look inside opportunities. Um, but the nice thing is, is that this has given us a great idea for a journal prompt book uh, to go in and make of our own finding different quotes or ideas about things that people can write to for their child. So this is a keeper. I would come back and I would look at this book a little bit more closely. And uh, we also can see that this is 1997. So they're pushing the boundaries of how many people are going to buy this book. And indeed, it doesn't sell very often. Um, but granted, when it does sell, it uh, is they have a really nice margin um, for what they're making on this book. It's a create space book, so the book probably cost two dollars and fifty cents to print. So they're making about fifteen dollars or more per book when this book sells. So uh, I again, I would take a look at how many pages are in this book. So it's got a hundred and uh, thirty-two right there. We can scroll down. In product details, it's a 172-page book. So that's a good-sized book. It's not too big. Also, we know it's a 6x9 book. It says product dimension 6x9. So it's a nice book a person can carry in their purse. Uh, so this is a great book to uh, think about modeling 
not stealing, but modeling my book after. Obviously, we can't see the rest of the look inside, um, and at $20, I'm not going to buy this book. Uh, but it does give me some ideas to write down on a piece of paper. And then here, and again, all of this happened because I clicked on one thing randomly, not even knowing what my research would be like. So watch this video again, take notes on what I've done because this research is pretty much the same for almost any tool that I use. The beauty about the AMZ Suggestion Expander is that you're actually using tools, you're actually using phrases that are absolutely typed right into Amazon and are the phrases that your buyers are typing in. So again, this is just a basic, uh, what they call journal pages, because it has the line for the date and then the notebook pages down there. So again, this is just a blank line notebook and you'll notice that they have actually said that it's a blank lined journal so that they're not misleading anyone um, because you would get bad reviews if a person bought this thinking that it was more complex like that last one and all they got was a blank line journal. They might be a little upset. And I think, yeah, one more. Um, so this is again a blank line journal uh, and you'll see that the blank line journals are only $6.99 and they're just notebooks. So. Uh, of all the books that we've looked at, the most promising one was that prayer for our unborn child. So I would make note of that. And then I would go back to my first page here. So myself and I'm doing research. I research one niche for my entire week. And I would be looking more about uh, these, a couple of these other books. I would spend some time doing look inside. And then I would formulate maybe three or four or five different types of books that I could make for expectant mothers. I might also create these books across a number of my brands so that it's not just one of my brands that's dominating on this page, but I might have two or three brands and I might make 10 books for each brand just to see how they sell and just make each one different. Maybe one a prayer journal, maybe one a plain journal book note lines inside and maybe one um, some different type of book that I found through my research um, and so that would be the way that I would go into this niche if I was going to be doing this so you see me go from the very beginning of installing this tool opening it up uh, setting it so that it opens in, uh, in my incognito window then doing my research in incognito, discovering an amazingly open niche that has lots of potential, and then you've seen how we have gone through and done our research. A question that I'm always getting from people is, how do I title my book? Well, if you look at a dozen or two dozen books that are in this genre, then you easily can see how they've titled their books. Almost all of these are very nice, tight, succinct, uh, books. Also, it gives me the ideas for my keywords, expectant mother, uh, writing journal, letters to my son, um, unborn child, prayer journal, mother's prayer journal, loving guide, uh, sacred pregnancy. Um, all of these are keywords that I would be writing down on a piece of paper or highlighting and copying and pasting uh, into another document. The other thing also people are always asking is how do I write descriptions? I would take a look at these descriptions again. We're not stealing them. We're taking a look at these descriptions and I would look at four or five or six descriptions, maybe a half a dozen descriptions. And then I would, when I've made my book, then I'm going to include some of the most important keywords like sentimental gift or a perfect mother's gift, a journal for mom on Mother's Day. You know, all of these different things are going to resonate with my book as well. So I'm picking and choosing some of the best phrases from out of all of these different descriptions. And then I will create my own description based upon what my book is going to be about. So everything that you need is right here. Hopefully this has been a helpful video and I will be making more like this on all of my favorite 
Amazon specific, low content specific research tools. Thanks and have a great day.